Welcome back. This is the first episode of season two of Fridge Cam. How are you doing, Barry? Well, I'm hungry. I eat food, so this is the show for me. In the fridge today, we have a mashup. We show you how to level up your mashed potato. Then we show you five amazing flavors to add to that mashed potato. But first. Wow. Curry's out for revenge. Wow, that was. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chef vs Chef Battle. Now, first time round. James, you lost. How are you feeling about today? Ben deserved to win last time. Hopefully he won't deserve to win this time. Fighting talk from Curry. Ebbers, how does that make you feel? Well, I've dumbed down my dish this time to give a poor guy a chance. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, like Marvin Gaye once said, let's get it on. Right, to line up with our escapism theme, I'm going to the south of France, Mediterranean. I'm going to do a lobster bisque frigola with sole and prawn mousse. Then I'm going to finish that with something fancy, a champagne beurre blanc and champagne foam. To begin with though, I need to make my bisque, so I've got myself a lobster. I need to chill it. One place I've always wanted to go to is the Middle East, so I've taken inspiration from all over the Middle East. And first off, we're making two different types of hummuses. We're making a traditional flavour plus a coffee flavoured hummus, which is going to go really well with some spiced lamb, spices of sumac and cloves and cinnamon. And we're going to make some lentils with olives and then finish it off with a homemade crispy flatbread. I'm going to take some cooked chickpeas, get them warm so that they go really smooth in the hummus. I'm going to blitz some with lemon juice, garlic and tahini. A lobster bisque is a really deep, flavourful sauce or soup or broth made from the shells of crustacean plus, in this case, a whole bunch of mirepoix. After losing the first battle, how can James come into this with a hummus? I, it's a good question. Right. It's a very good question. It is a very yeah. good question. Although, coffee ah. hummus. Coffee. I'm intrigued by that. The thing I, I noticed about Ben's is that he said he dumbed it down and then said a load yeah. of French words that no one knows. Escapism is all about treating yourself. So I've got a bottle of champers. I'm going to take about a large glass and reduce it right down to a syrup with a little white wine vinegar, shallot, garlic and pepper. That'll be the base to my beurre blanc. Blah, 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 blah. Once you've made your hummus, split it into two, add coffee to one half of it. So you finished now? Well, I've made hummus. Mate, have a seat. There's some space. <laughs> To make the lentils, cut up a couple of shallots, just a small dice, mince a clove of garlic, add the lentils after about five minutes of frying, uh, add the olives and simmer for about 25 minutes. Don't worry guys, James is pimping his hummus with lentils. With some good colour on the veg and shells, in with some per notes, that's got an aniseed flavour, then veg stock, tomato puree, and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. So uh, how long does a good bisque take? A good bisque takes a while. How long? Like this is an average hours. bisque, and we'll get away with that 45 minutes. Average bisque. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Average Get bisque. your nose in that. Get your nose in that. Smell that. Oh, no. Next up, I'm going to start adding some texture to my dish. So I'm going to cook the lamb with some cinnamon, cumin, sumac, and cloves. And I'm going to cook it for about 25 minutes until all the liquid has evaporated and it starts crisping up in its own fat. The fish I'm using is a really fine white fish. It's sole. All I've done is basically fillet it. So we get these lovely, beautiful fillets, four fillets of a flatfish. And what I'm left with is that. That goes into my stock. For my crisp bread, I'm going to add some plain flour to a bowl, wholemeal flour, a couple of tablespoons of white sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. And then I'm going to make it into a dough with some water and some olive oil. Next thing I need to whip up is a mousse, but not a chocolate mousse or a strawberry mousse. This is a prawn mousse. It's going to be in between our sole and we're going to steam it. Once you have your dough, tip it out onto a floured surface and just knead it with plenty of flour until it becomes just soft. These beautiful fillets of sole are now skinless boneless, we're going to fold them in half and sandwich two, seasoned, with our prawn mousse in the middle. Those will just need a few minutes of steaming later on just before we serve it. To finish the bisque, I've scooped out the fish and the bay leaves, but everything else is going to be blended up. And when I say everything, I literally mean the whole lot, shells included, which I'm sure will give the boys on the backbench something to moan. 
We would never moan about anything. We are lovely Ooh. guys. We are happy to be here. The great thing about bisque is by blending up the shells, you get all of the flavour. But if you were to serve this now, it would be gritty. So we're going to sieve it, but not just through a sieve, through a cheesecloth. And what's dribbling through there now needs seasoning up. A little bit of lemon juice, salt and pepper. Traditionally, cream. I'm not adding that until after I've cooked it because I'm using this as the base to cook my fregola. Is it worth recapping to say the ultimate chef's battle is made up of a fish soup and chips and dips? No, 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 no. You cannot be trusted. <laughs> Welcome to Level Up. Now, if you don't know what Level Up is, it's where we take some everyday dishes and with a few simple tips and tricks, take them a level up. They're really quick, really easy, and the reason for that is we're not chefs. We're, we're normal. normal. So today, it's all about mashed potato. Oh. I've got some baked potatoes. They've been rubbed in oil, salt, and they've gone into the oven. No, whoa, whoa. Mashed potato, where do you start? Boiled potatoes. The reason that these are better than boiling your potatoes is because you dry them out so much they take on all the flavour of the milk and the butter and the salt that we're going to add later. When you boil them, they take on a lot of the water and actually the water retention stops a lot of the flavour being taken on. Didn't expect that. No, me neither. Now, I know what you're thinking, ain't nobody got time for that. You can microwave these. You'll get a similar result, but not as good. These are the driest potatoes what have ever been dried out in an oven. First step is to peel them. This is going to take a couple of minutes, so let's just jump cut to them being done. Right, so now I'm going to mash these with a potato masher. Those skins are for eating, so you can get stuck in, boys. Don't over mash them because otherwise it overworks the starch and they become really gloopy and like, like wallpaper paste. What happened to you? I thought you were normal. <laughs> now, I have a warm cow because in here <laughs> there is melted butter and warmed milk. Wow. And we are going to... Is that how it works? Yeah. So now half of this goes in. It's starting to come together and look like mash now. Yeah. Now, how do you get super smooth mash with no lumps. I've got it. What? Do you use a colander? <laughs> you use a colander, but just with really small holes, <laughs> otherwise called a sieve. Oh. This is an effort, but what you get for the end result is delicious. So now this is the hard bit. You then take your mashed potato and you push it through the sieve, Ooh. through the edges. And there, look at that. Look how oh. lovely and thin that's going to be. So now, the rest of this goes in. Let's talk about texture because the texture that you're looking for is something that holds its form but still is a little bit smooth and like it's got a little bit of movement to it. What you don't want to do is just chuck it and it's rock solid and it stays there. You want something that you slot down, it holds its form but it's just slightly moved. And that is, I think, good to go. And then you plate it up. Oh, oh, oh creamy, beautiful. Look at that. Now it's really a restaurant, it's got parsley in the middle. That is some good mash. From one stock of a plate to another. Yep. Bring it back to James's. Definitely. No, 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 don't be mean to him. I'm not, I'm trying to work it he out. He took that out of the packet, so he has done something to it. Is that out of the packet? So what, this is for gas. Is it out of a packet? Yes. For texture on my dish, I'm going to blitz up some fugas, mix through a little bit of olive. Out of a packet. Out of, a packet. out of a packet. And then toast it in an oven. You can't just keep saying for gas and hope it's going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> to finish off my lentils, yes. I'm going to add all the flavours. I can smell the flavour. Can you smell the oregano? Okay. Oh, there you go. Some mint, some parsley, and the tomato that I peeled earlier. I'm going to uh, take the seeds out and I'm going to dice it. Marianne, best of friends. When you have to watch a video more than once and try and understand, I was mumbling. <laughs> Someone hasn't washed Ben's chef's jacket properly. It seems to have shrunk in the waist a bit. So to finish off my fregula, the sweetness of petit pois, the freshness of tomato con casse, and then we're also going to steam the fish, colander over water, these can go in. The final trick I have up my sleeve is a champagne foam. So more champagne, and here comes the science. Soy lecithin. You found naturally an egg yolk, put into powder formation, a little sprinkle of that into my champagne, and then blend it up will give us a champagne foam. Doesn't matter how many bubbles you've got when your fish is overcooking. <laughs> he has a point. 
Another 30 seconds. There's two minutes to go. Ben is sweating more than ever, and James is just, well, he's just grumpy like usual. Um, they need to start plating up, and we need to get things into the sexies. Um, can I just check? They definitely eat hummus in Israel, don't they? So, Eber, should we start with you? So this is a lobster bisque fregola with sole and prawn mousse, finished with champagne beurre blanc and champagne foam. Oh, we did a good title. It's sweet, yet deep. I'd say delicate. No. Very, it sounded impressive, tasted impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. James. This is a hummus sharing platter with spiced lamb, and also, I made you guys some crisp breads. James found the flavour. You put, and you put all of it in it. Coffee hummus is the way forward, James. We have to vote, we have to put on a t-shirt, we have to make a decision. Okay. Rach, do the thing with the camera. Which you around yet? Oh, I still can't see. I still haven't looked. Whee! You've taken oh! it, James. I thought, I thought yeah. you'd won there because you... No, I was celebrating. I was celebrating, yeah! I was celebrating that, that, that one. I, I won a battle. That one. I won a battle. Well, there you have it. That is another chef's battle done and when it comes to our vote, it's one all. But it's not just up to us, it's up to you as well. So make sure that you comment down below, let us know who your vote would go for. There'll be a poll on YouTube, you can do it there, you can do it on the website. Basically, let us know who you think should win the ultimate chef's battle. And uh, I think I speak for everyone here when I say, this is how everyone feels in January. <laughs> <laughs> James has pulled it back, yep, one one. But like we said, you need to vote, so do that now and we'll find out who the winner is and the loser is going to have to do a punishment on Facebook. Yes, and we're not going to tell you when that is, but it will be next week. But you've got to like the Facebook page to find out. Ha! Well, I reckon that fridge cam had everything. It had a battle-winning hummus. And it had us back for season two. It sure did. And if you stick with us now, we're going to show you five ways to flavour your amazing mash, what you made from Level Up. Come with us now. We'll see you next week. Bye. Well done, James. Well done, James. Next time, let's do desserts for Chef Battle. Ooh. Take it sweet. Oh, what, so we had starters, you did a main course last time, <laughs> and then next time, just, oh, I think that makes sense. And we're going to fill it all out with plenty of mashed potato. That's up next. Link. What? What? <laughs>